Welcome to the second on shape video on looking at modeling some flat pack furniture. Uh, so we're going to start off by opening up the model. So uh, it's in my recent files here, but I can go into the folder and I can double click on the file to open it up. And here are the parts that we drew uh, last time. These are the ones we modeled last time. So we've got the, the leg, the tabletop and the table shelf. So what we're going to draw now, what we're going to model now, is going to be the fasteners to hold this all together. So um, we could do those in position, the same as we've drawn these components in position, but it might be quite difficult to see those parts uh, with various bits and pieces in the way. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to create another part studio, and in that part studio we're going to model all of the fasteners. And then in a subsequent video uh, we'll put everything together in an assembly. So to save any confusion, the first thing I'm going to do is right click on the part studio that we've got at the moment and I'm going to left click on rename. So I'm going to call this components because that's what we've got, the major components that we're, we're making. I'm now going to click on the plus sign and I'm going to create another part studio. And you'll see that we've got another part studio turn up here. So I'm going to rename that one straight away. So I'm going to right click on there, rename it, and I'm going to call it Fasteners and hit return. So here we've got our three work planes again. We've got our tools across the top and um, we're going to effectively create a small bracket. Um, what will represent a, a threaded pin to hold the legs on and a small screw that will be used to hold the bracket to the legs and also to hold the bracket to the shelf. So we're going to start off with the screw and uh, this is going to involve us using a slightly different feature. Uh, so I'm going to draw on the front work plane. So I'm going to right click on front work plane, left click on new sketch, and then I'm going to press the N key on the keyboard so that I'm looking normal to uh, the work plane that we've selected. And now I'm just going to create a simple small sketch so i'm just going to draw this out and it's going to be much bigger than i need it to be at the moment so i've just done a corner rectangle which is the default from the origin upwards and now i'm going to draw a vertical line and a diagonal line and i'm going to make sure that that doesn't hit the center spot there so i don't want to lock it to the midpoint of that line so I'm going to purposely avoid that, but I'm going to make sure that it connects to the line there. And I'm just going to use the cut tool to remove that part there. So this is my profile um, of my screw, but I need to put some dimensions on this. So let's use the dimension tool. Um, so the first thing, the height of the what's going to be the head of the screw is going to be two millimeters. So I'm going to change that to two and you can see that everything shrinks down. Now I now want um, the length of this line um, to be the radius of the screw head. Now I know that the diameter of the head of the screw is three and a half millimeters. Um, now if I'm not very good at maths I can actually put 3.5 divided by 2, knowing that the radius is half of the diameter, and the software will work that out for me. So there you go, 1.75. Uh, I now want to put in the length of the screw, so I'm just going to go from there to there. So this is going to represent the threaded part of the screw, uh, which is going to be 8 millimeters long. Um, so this is just a representation, we're not going to put any thread on there. And then uh, the diameter of the screw at the top. So I'm just going to click on the origin and then on that point and I'm going to dimension that and that is going to be 1.5. So there's the, the body of my screw. Um, that actually uh, doesn't quite look as though it's in proportion. It doesn't look like we've got enough here. So let's go back and edit that so we can do that. We're still in the dimension tool we can click on there and let's change that to 2 so we've got a slightly uh, bigger head on the screw there. Okay, um, so that's the profile of the screw done. Uh, we always need to make sure when we're making a sketch, and the sketches we've used so far have been very, very simple, but if we've got a more complicated sketch, we need to make sure 
uh, that we follow a very basic rule that every point on that sketch should only have two lines coming away from it. So if we take this corner, we've got a horizontal line going off to the right, we've got a vertical line coming down. Likewise, over here we've got a horizontal line going off to the right and then our angled line going down. We don't actually have a line here, that's the, uh, the edge of one of the other work planes. So in the past we've been creating parts by extruding them. For this part we're going to do a revolve. So I'm going to click on the revolve tool and it's automatically picked up the sketch that we've done but it wants us to select an axis. So we need to click in the revolve axis box and then we're going to select the line uh, that is there. So there's our um, screw uh, drawn. Okay, um, again, you could argue that that looks a little bit out of proportion, um, but we'll go okay with that. So I'm now going to show you how we can edit a sketch. So you see the, the sketch is uh, ghosted out here because that sketch is now being used as part of a feature. However, we can still select it. So if we right click on it, we can still edit the sketch. And I'll just close that. The other thing we can do is if we right click on the feature, we can also edit the sketch. We can edit the feature or we can edit the sketch. Uh, so I'm just going to press N again to, to view on the work plane. And that 2 looks a little bit high, doesn't it? So let's change that to uh, 1 millimeter. see what that looks like. That looks as though it's more in proportion. Um, and actually, this might be quite nice if it had a little radius on there or a fillet on there. Now, we could do that two ways. We could do that in the sketch by adding a fillet uh, in there. So a fillet in engineering is a, a radius. Um, or we could do it as a feature. Let's do it uh, in the sketch. So I'm going to click on the sketch fillet and I'm going to click on the point, the corner that I want to fill it. Now you can see at the moment um, it's put a radius of five millimeters in, which is far too big, and that's why it's uh, drawn that in red. So if I hit enter, it won't do anything. So let's double click on the radius and let's make that 0 0.5 and now hit enter and this time it works. Okay, so there it is drawn in there. Now all I need to do, I don't need to apply the feature again, I just need to come out of the sketch and automatically it will draw our screw. You could argue maybe that that radius is a little bit big. Okay, so um, we're not putting a thread on here but let's uh, try and show it um, with uh, a slot in there so it could uh, be turned into the hole that we're going to uh, use later on. So let's put a little slot in there. Um, in this instance we're going to create another sketch. So if I zoom out we can see that we're still on the front work plane so I can right click on the front work plane, go new sketch and zoom in. And this time just to make it easier I'm going to use a center point rectangle. I'm going to hover up above the origin and I'm just going to drag out a center rectangle oh. and now I'm going to dimension that so use the dimension tool so I want the width of this to be one millimeter and as you can see it's jumped up but that's okay uh, what I want to do is to click at the bottom edge or on the origin and then click to the bottom edge of there and make that distance and we know that this is a millimetre, so we're going to make that 0 0.5, so that brings that rectangle down. Now, it doesn't matter how high that rectangle is, all it's going to do is cut out that slot. Uh, so let's do that. So let's click on the Extrude tool. And if I just spin that round sideways, you can see at the moment it wants to add in material and it wants to go off in one direction. We want to remove material, uh, and you can see it's decided to go in the opposite direction, but we want to do it in both directions. Uh, so we're actually going to change the condition here. Here it says blind, which means it will go blindly off whatever distance we set it, 25 millimeters. I'm going to change that so that it says through all. So that will just cut through all of the material of that particular part, um, no matter how big that is. But you'll see it's not come towards us in the screen. So we're going to pick the second end position and again we're going to change that so that it goes through all. Now you might choose to use um, a through all instead of a distance if you're playing around with different sizes, if you're using your CAD package to uh, develop uh, a model, to develop a part and you're not quite sure what it's going to be when it's finished. So if you make other changes and you've only put a distance on there, um, 
then it might not go through everything. So that's just a, a good tip there of doing that. Click the tick and there's our little screw that we can use for our model. Okay, so we're going to draw um, a couple of other components as well. Um, they're not going to re relate to each other, they're not going to be joined to each other, they're just going to be separate parts, um, but we're just going to draw them in um, the same part studio. We could draw them in separate part studios if we wanted to, but we're going to do them in the same one. Uh, so I'm now going to right click on the top work plane and select new sketch and press N to view onto it. So I can see that I've got my screw head there looking down on it. I'm now going to create a part that would again be threaded. We're not going to put the thread on it, we're just going to do a representation. And this would be the threaded stud that the legs would be screwed to the table with. So I'm just coming a little bit to the left of our screw head and I'm dragging out a circle and then I'm going to use the scroll wheel on the mouse just to zoom in. I'm going to dimension that six millimeters uh, and you can see it's moved it over that's fine as long as it's not overlapping as long as there's a distance if I needed to I could put a distance in there to distance it away if I wanted and I'm now going to uh, extrude that 40 millimeters in each direction so I'm going to choose the extrude tool I'm going to make the distance 80 millimeters because that's the total distance I want so hit 80 and you can see it's all gone upwards um, now quite often if you've got parts that are going to be symmetrical um, it's a good idea to think about making them symmetrical about a work plane so it's exactly what I'm going to do we're going to use a different condition this time instead of blind we're going to pick symmetric so that distance is still 80 millimeters but it's extruded it 40 millimeters up and 40 millimeters down um, why have we done that? Well, we can use the, the mirror tool. So I'm going to show you the mirror tool. So click the tick to say that we're happy with that. You'll notice that it automatically did it as a new part. Um, so it's a different color. It wouldn't add it on to the, the part. Um, we can combine parts if they overlap later on. Um, but now that we've got two parts, let's name them so that we don't get confused. So I'm going to right click on part one and rename it and call that screw and I'm going to right click on part two and rename that and call that stud because it's basically what it is. So um, really this would be threaded um, up to the halfway point and from the other end it would be threaded up to the halfway point so it will screw in one half will screw into the leg one half will screw into the tabletop. Um, so we could we could get away with just leaving that like that um, but it's good practice not to have sharp um, square corners. If we turn that around you can see what I mean by a square corner. It's a 90 degree corner there. So let's put a little chamfer on there. So a chamfer um, is I suppose similar to a, a fillet. A fillet is where you put a radius on. A chamfer is where you would cut the corner off. So we're just going to put a chamfer on. We're going to go for the default uh, which is equal distance and we're going to change that to one millimeter and we'll zoom in and I'll explain what that means. By being equal distance and one millimeter it basically means we're going to cut this corner off at 45 degrees. We're going to come in one millimeter this way and we're going to come down one millimeter that way. So uh, set that to one millimeter and we're just going to then click on this edge and you can see the effect. So it's come in one millimeter and gone down one millimeter. And now we'll click on the bottom edge as well and we can see that that's done a nice chamfer as well so we'll click the tick to say that we're happy with that and I can right click and select zoom to fit and it will show the two parts that we've drawn so far so we've got the screw we've got the stud the last part we need to make is the little supporting bracket for the tabletop uh, so uh, again uh, it won't matter uh, what work plane we draw that component in we're basically going to draw a side profile so I'm going to right click on the right work plane and select new sketch press N to view normal to it and this time I'm just going to draw this over to the side so I'm going to start off with a corner rectangle and I'm just going to drag that out and I'm going to dimension that uh, so that it's the right size for what I want. So dimension tool and I'm going to make that one 20 millimeters 
and that one 20 millimeters. Now, um, the bracket is actually an L shape. So what I'm going to do is I am going to offset these two lines to make my bracket and then trim off the bits that I don't want. So we're going to use the offset tool, which is this one here. And we'll click on our first line and you can see it's gone in the right direction, which is good. If, it, if we wanted it to go the other way, we'd drag it the other way. So it's gone in the right direction. And I'm going to click on the bottom line as well. And it's done that the same. And if I just hit enter, the number comes up, the distance comes up, and I can enter the distance that I want. So I'm going to type in three and hit enter. I'm now going to trim off the rest of the lines that I don't want. So I'm going to use the trim tool, and I'm just simply going to cut that off and cut that off. So I've now got an L shape, and I now need to extrude that to make the model of that part, the base part of that model. So extrude, and I'm going to use the symmetric tool again, and the distance I want is 10 millimeters. Click the tick, and there is our little bracket. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little radius in here. This is uh, based upon an, a cast part and we try and have uh, a radius in those to stop there being stresses in the corner. So I'm going to use the fillet tool and I'm going to change that to three millimeters and then I'm just going to click on the inside and then we put a little fillet in there. I'm now going to put a couple of holes in this. So first hole I'm going to put on what is essentially the bottom surface. So I'm going to right click, new sketch, enter view normal to the surface, use the circle tool, and I'm just going to line this up with the origin, so that's the reason for going symmetrical, and draw a circle, and I'm going to dimension that, and that wants to be 13 millimeters from the corner to the center, and it wants to have a diameter of three millimeters. And I'm just going to then do an extrude cut. So I'm going to remove material and I'm going to change that so it says through all and click the tick. I'm going to do exactly the same now over here. So I'm going to right click on this surface, go new sketch, go normal to, and I'm going to draw a circle lined up with the work plane, dimension it three millimeters, and from the corner, dimension to the center, 13 millimeters. One. Feature, remove material. Through all, click the tick, and that's our little corner bracket. Uh, now, probably a good idea, as we had a, a radius in there, uh, to put a radius on these corners as well. That's how the part would be manufactured. Um, stops you catching things and also uh, reduces stress in the manufacturing process. So let's use the fillet tool, and again, we'll just go for a three millimeter fillet and we'll put it on those four corners. And that's our little L bracket made. So we've got part three, we'll rename that and call it L bracket. So that's the three different fasteners that we're going to use for our assembly modeled. In the next video, will assemble everything.